So far in our lecture series, we've talked about unicast traffic, right? So we've talked about I send you a frame and you send me a frame, this one-to-one -one communication that's going on between us. We've also talked about broadcast traffic. I need to send a frame and that frame goes to everybody, right? So I send a frame into a switch looking for maybe a single destination, even though that's meant for unicast. What does the switch do? The switch broadcasts it and floods it out every single port. So we've talked about this one-to-one -one and this one to everybody. What if I need to be somewhere in the middle? What if I need to send a frame and five people on the network need to receive that frame at the exact same time? Such as video streaming or online gaming. I mean, at the end of this video, I would expect that every single one of you guys is gonna light up a Call of Duty server using IGMP. And that's what we're gonna talk about here today. We're gonna talk about IGMP and how it relates to multicast routing. Now, multicast routing is gonna have two pieces to it. We're gonna have the layer two piece and the layer three piece. Now, the layer three piece, obviously, we won't cover in the layer two section because that wouldn't make any sense. So we're gonna cover the IGMP piece, which is, of course, you guessed it, inside of the Layer 2 section. So, you can see the nice pretty slide up behind me. Let's go ahead and jump into IGMP. First of all, as it relates to your CCIE version 5 lab exam, if you are asked to, to do multicast, if you are asked to implement multicast, and which, by the way, you are most likely going to be asked this, because multicast is just everywhere today in 2015. I mean, it's just, it's everywhere. So you're most likely going to have to do this in some way, shape, or form. Obviously, I can never say you're going to because they have so many different versions of the exam. I mean, I have no idea, right? But, but if you're asked to do this, you're not going to have a physical host. The, the whole point of IGMP, the primary function of IGMP, is to notify these local multicast routers that I am interested in receiving traffic on this particular multicast group. That's what IGMP essentially does. If I have a multi, if, if I'm a member of a multicast group address, let's use this one here, 224.10.10.250, IGMP is the process or the protocol, the function that we're going to use to let our neighboring multicast router know, hey, I'm interested in receiving multicast traffic that's being sent out on the network for this particular group. Now, then you're going to have the layer three piece, you're going to have PIM, you're going to have sparse or dense mode, you're going to have all those pieces that play into this. But IGMP's one and only purpose is to notify that multicast enabled router, essentially that next top guy, hey, I'm interested in receiving this traffic. That's the whole function. Now, in the CCIE version 5 lab exam, you're not going to have any hosts, any desktops or laptops or anything like that on your network that are actually going to have to be enabled for this. If you have to do this, it's going to be a router or it's going to be a, uh, an SVI on a switch or it's going to be a, a, a layer 3 port on a switch. It's going to be some type of router or switch port that's going to have to join to the specific address that Cisco gives you. And the, this here is the command syntax that you're going to use to join that interface to that particular group address. So you're gonna come in under that interface and you're gonna say IP IGMP join group. And by the way, this is kind of a sub note. This is going to require that you use IP multicast routing globally on the device. If you don't do that, then this process isn't going to work because the whole, I just wanna erase this line here and redraw it a little bit straight. There we go. So if you don't do this, then the IGMP join messages are not going to work properly. So you have to enable this globally in order for, your, for everything to come together. And by the way, you can't really do one piece of multicast without the other. So if you're playing with this at home and you're trying to mess with IGMP, you can't have IGMP essentially working properly and going through the process and seeing all the things I'm going to show you here without having PIM up and running, without having the layer three piece up and running. So if you're playing with multicast now, this might be a good time to skip to the IGMP uh, layer three video, or I'm sorry, the multicast layer three video and watch that, okay? And, and get PIM up and running. Anyway, so this is how we're going to essentially tell that device that I want you to now receive traffic that is sent or sourced to this, or sent to this address, let's just say send, right? So IGMP, again, is going to have three different flavors. And really what we just need to know about these three flavors is how do we change the version? What are the things we should be looking for in, in regards to the features or how they're going to operate so we know which version of IGMP we need to implement 
if we're asked to in our lab exam. So IGMP version 1 gave us what we call this membership query. Now all multicast enabled routers, so every router that you enabled multicast on would send this membership query to this group address 224.0.0.1 and this TTL would be set to 1. And the reason for this would be to try and find clients. And I'm going to have a separate video on the query and explain exactly what it's doing, etc. So I'm just going to leave it there at this moment. So this membership queries primary function is to try to find clients that are interested in receiving multicast traffic. And when these clients receive this query, they respond with this membership report. And this membership report contained the desired group. So I received this query and I would say, yep, I'm interested in traffic for 224-1010-250. Okay? At that moment, I would now be registered with that multicast router as having a, having a client that's interested in this particular traffic. And I, I, I'm not going to go deeper than that because that would require going into PIM and all these different things and I'm going to do that in that layer 3 video. But at this point that next hop router is going to essentially see, yes, I have a client that is interested in this traffic for 224-1010-250. Uh, we had two problems with this. The two problems with IGMP version 1 was that in all of these multicast routers would essentially be sending this membership query and so there was no control over it. If, if I had 20 routers, all 20 routers were looking around my network for, uh, for, these, um, for these membership reports, for these interested clients. That's not really uh, productive, right? I mean, that's, that's not really good to have all these membership queries being sent out throughout your network and they're in a timed interval. The other problem with this is that we had no leave message. So when we actually leave an IGMP group, our, our, we're actually going to send a leave message and say, I no longer want to receive traffic from this particular group. And in IGMP version 1, we didn't have that leave message. So what would happen is once we stopped receiving, or once we wanted to stop receiving traffic from this group, and essentially I, I asked this and said, no, I'm good, there was no leave message. And so, I would continue to receive this traffic until that membership until that membership report timed out and that query came back to me and I essentially didn't respond with anything then he would stop sending me that traffic. So so we had some issues here with version 1. And so we implemented version 2. Now what version 2 did was version 2 allowed us to send the membership query to either the group address of 224001 or it allowed us to send it directly to a multicast group. What it also did was it gave us the ability to have a leave message. So when I no longer want to receive this multicast traffic I will actually send what I call a leave message to say to that to to my query router, hey, I no longer want to receive this traffic. I'm no longer interested in this traffic. That router is then going to remove that that um, that entry from my M route table, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. I would then remove that entry from my M route table, and essentially, I would no longer be receiving this multicast traffic. Now lastly what it did was it gave us a little bit better control over that query router because rather than having all of my multicast routers be the query router essentially sending out these membership queries, it gave us a little bit more control by giving us an election process and that election process is based on the lowest IP address in our network. So all of the multicast enabled routers on a segment, it's very important, on a segment Whoever had the lowest IP address will now become the DQ, I call it the drama queen, the designated query router. It will be that router's responsibility to send out the queries. Now this is not a rendezvous point, this has had nothing to do with the layer 3 piece, rendezvous point, PIM, all, all that kind of stuff. This is the query router for IGMP, okay? Now the main difference that we need to be concerned about between IGMP version 2 and version 3 is that version 3 gave us support for source specific multicast and I will get into that when I talk about layer 3 multicast. Now lastly this range here is our available group range for multicast addresses okay so this range here 224000 to 239255255255 is the available multicast range but we can't use all of them for example 224001 to 2240254 
or 255, I should say, from 0 to 255, is reserved for things like EIGRP and OSPF and RIP and all these different things and all these different protocols. And there is a long, obnoxious list that you can Google to see every single one of those addresses. And if you want to memorize them, good for you. But essentially, we're just going to need to know that we can't use all of them. And this range here, 22400 slash 24, is going to be reserved for other, um, for other protocols, for other implementations on our routers. So enough talk. Let's actually get into a CLI here. Let me just bring it up. And let's go ahead and get into this. Now, I don't know. Okay, so let me actually say show IP route. Let me just make sure that this cleared out. Good. So let's exit out of here, and we'll go to router 2. Now, let me just give you guys an FYI. I already have, as you may have guessed seeing my output on router 1, I already have multicast up and running on, this, on, on both routers, between router 1 and router 2, and they're just two directly connected routers at this point. So if I say show IP PIM neighbor, I have a neighbor that is my router 1, so 10.1.12.1 uh, .1 .1 on this particular interface. So I already have PIM up and running. What I'm going to do is I want the interface Ethernet 02, which is connected to router 1, I want him to essentially receive traffic that is sent to 224.222. Config T, the interface Ethernet 02, and I'm going to say IP, IGMP, join group, and I'm going to say 224.2.2.2. As far as telling router 2 to uh, and this port to receive this traffic, this is all I need to do. But what if I want to change the version? I can say IP, IGMP, and use the version command, and that version command is going to allow me to choose version 1 or version 2. By default, it is going to be version 2. IP IGMP is going to be where we find all of our IGMP specific commands on, on this particular interface. For example, the helper address, the immediate leave. It, here's where we are going to have all of these different IGMP related commands on this interface. I'm going to exit out of here and what I want to say is I'm going to say show IP IGMP groups. This is going to give me the groups that I am a member of. This is going to give me the, the IGMP groups that I am actually listening in for. And this is the one that I am actually looking for because this is the one that I just added. So it tells me that I am looking for 224.222. This is the interface that's enabled. Here are my timers and here is the reported router. So essentially this is me. I'm the router that wants to listen to this group. I could also say show IP IGMP and use the membership command. Whoop, sorry about that. I double I was I got click happy. And this is essentially going to give me the same kind of information. It's going to tell me that the channel and group that I want to listen to is going to be um, 224 uh, 222. It gives me the interface or the, the reporter that's reporting that he wants this traffic, which in this case is going to be me. And it tells me the interface that is enabled for this particular traffic. I'm going to say show IP IGMP and I'm going to use the interface command. Now in the interface command I need to specify the interface that I'm actually looking for which in this case is going to be Ethernet 02. And here's where I'm going to have all the IGMP related output for this particular interface. So I'm going to have the version again the default version if I say do show run interface Ethernet 02 oops sorry show run interface Ethernet 02 You'll notice how, I mean, you saw me, I typed IP IGMP version 2, but that version command is nowhere in here, yet I'm actually running version 2. The reason is, is because the default IGMP version that I'm going to run is going to be 2. Now, I'm going to get into specifically what these timers mean when I talk about the query message, when I talk about what the query is actually doing. So I'm, I'm just going to simply highlight these for you right now and show you that this is the command that I would essentially type to look at the IGMP related messages or the, I want to say the IGMP, um, you know, the IGMP details on this interface and Lastly, I mentioned the query. I mentioned that the lowest IP address was going to be the query router. Here is where you're going to see that the IGMP querying router is 10.1.12.1, and that's essentially router 1. Now, once I've actually established that I'm interested in this traffic, okay, so <clears throat> let me scroll up a little bit before I exit it out. I shouldn't exit it out. This was my M route table. This was the actual 
multicast routing table of router one. But now I've essentially established IGMP on router two. I've added this group address to the, that interface on router two. So we've had this transition. We've had the query message from router one. We've had the membership report back from router two. If I say show IPM route, notice how now at this point, I have an M route in my router one routing table that says I have an I have somebody on this interface who's interested in receiving traffic for 224.2.2.2. So in a nutshell here, this is what IGMP is going to do. The IGMP versions are really of no significance other than how they operate. What are they actually doing? And in your case, studying for the CCIE version 5 exam, version 2 and version 3 are really going to be the two versions that you're going to deal with. I would find it highly unlikely that you're going to have to change the versions in your lab exam. However, if you are asked to use source specific multicast, then you're going to have to change the version to version three. But other than that, you're typically going to leave this alone. And most of what you need to know, or most of what you need to do, I should say, is going to be within the confines of just simply adding a particular interface or device to join a multicast group.